Good morning and welcome to Sunday School at Freedom Baptist Church on YouTube. This is a very special day. This is Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm glad you have come to join us and invite your family to come with you, your moms and dads, your brothers and sisters, your grandmas and grandpas. This is a special time for the whole family. And we have been exploring God's Word each and every week, particularly in our Bible bookshelf, going through the 66 books of the Bible and going through one or two books each week as just an overview to see what it's about. Well, we're not going to do that this morning, but we are going to be a few different places in God's Word, and the Bible is a book of salvation. It's a book showing God's plan of salvation for you and for me. And this is a very special day, but this has been a very special week. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. That represents the day when Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, and they were singing his praises, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But only a handful of days later, they would be crucifying him and not accepting him as the Messiah. Also this week, it has been Passover, and Passover ended yesterday evening. And the Passover was a time when the Jews celebrated God's provision and protection for them in Egypt. When the tenth plague was going over Egypt, they were supposed to kill a lamb and take the blood and put it on the doorposts. And if their, the blood was on the doorpost, the death angel would pass over that house and the firstborn would not be killed. And God told Moses, how the people could be protected. And so that's what the Jews celebrate, God's protection, and it's really a picture of the sacrifice that saved them. And when John, um, God has provided for his people, all throughout the Bible, we see God providing the coverings for Adam and Eve, the skins after they sinned, animals, Blood had to be shed. God provided the ark for Noah and his family to, to save mankind so that mankind could continue. Um, God provided the ram sacrifice in the place of Isaac. God provided a way for Israel to get out of Egypt. He provided a way through the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea. And when he was giving the consequences and telling them the results of their sin, he promised that there would be a serpent conqueror, the seed of the woman. This would be the Messiah that he told the prophets about, the anointed one, the coming king that they would write about and that the people would wait for. And then finally, Jesus was born the God-man, the perfect Son of God, and he grew up to be a man, and his cousin John the Baptizer saw him and pointed to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Jesus chose the twelve disciples, and he taught them, and he told them he would have to die. He told them the time was coming soon, but they didn't understand it. He told them that one would betray him and that they all would run and flee away from him. And they didn't understand, but that's exactly what happened. Judas betrayed him. They all fled from him. He was taken before Pilate and tried. He was beaten and scourged and mocked and made fun of. And Jesus didn't deserve that at all. But he endured that. For you and for me. And then they put him on a cross. 
He died an excruciating death. He could have called 10,000 angels, like Pastor Dan told us last Sunday in his sermon in Luke. But he didn't. He stayed on that cross, bearing the sin of the world, bearing your sin and mine. We deserve to be up on that cross. Not him. But he stayed there for you and for me. And they took him down and they buried him. Can you imagine what his followers thought? Did they remember that he would be risen three days later? I don't think that's what they were thinking about. I think they were so distraught and overwhelmed. Their Savior was gone. Their Master, their Lord, the one they had followed, the one they had worshipped. His body was in the ground. And their hearts were heavy with darkness. He was buried. But did he stay in that grave? No. The third day later, uh, on the third day, he arose. He had victory over death. And because Jesus lives, you and I can also live. So now we're going to sing our Sunday school song that we sing about every year describing everything that is that we celebrate in this past week, the Passion Week, and there are some great motions that go to it. And the first verse is lifted up. Jesus, Son of Man, was lifted up on a cross. So cross your arms and put it above your head. And Brenna, she's going to play. Let's sing. Because of his perfection and because of who he is, 
the God-man, he was able to pay our sin penalty, and we are able to have salvation through him. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you're here. Get your Bibles, and we're going to have a quick lesson that goes along with Easter Sunday. Uh, it's not going to be an overview of one of the books on our Bible bookshelf, but it is in the Bible. This morning, we're going to quickly go through the story of Mary Magdalene at the Empty Tomb. Mary Magdalene at the Empty Tomb. Have you ever heard of Mary Magdalene before? You can call her Magdalene or Mary Magdala, and I think in our English translations there are different ways to say it. Who is this Mary? Um, who is this Mary? Mary was a common name in the New Testament. We have common names, don't we? In our church, our pastor, one of our deacons, and at least two of our missionaries all have the same name, Daniel. And there may be others with that name. There, me and two other men in our church and one of our missionaries have the same name, the common name of Bill. We have several young ladies by the name of Hannah. All right, we've got some Heathers and some Sandys, and we have some common names. We have a couple Johns, but Mary was a common name in the New Testament. Who is this Mary. There was Mary, the mother of Jesus. There was Mary, the sister of Lazarus. And many believe, uh, scholars believe that the Hebrew uh, name was Miriam and that the Greek translation was Mary. But Mary, the sister of Lazarus, Mary, the wife of Clopas or Cleopas. And according to John, this Mary was sister to Mary, the mother of Jesus. They were sisters and they had the same name. I don't know, maybe one was Mary, one was, one was Miriam, who, who knows? And then there was Mary, the mother of Mark, John Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark. And Mary, uh, the believers met at her house in Jerusalem and they prayed for Peter when he was in prison, remember that? And then Mary Magdalene, and there were probably other Marys. Who is this Mary Magdalene? Well, take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. When Jesus was on earth, he ran into a lot of people. Some people, religious leaders, often were irritated by him. They didn't like his message. They wanted the Messiah to come in their own way. They didn't think they were sinners. They didn't think they needed a Savior. Some of them, anyway. But Jesus chose 12 disciples, and were these the great examples of righteousness? No, they were filthy fishermen, and a tax collector, and a zealot that wanted to kill everybody. And one was the one who would betray Jesus. But anyway, there were other people who followed Jesus. Didn't he heal a lot of people? Didn't he transform many people's lives? Look at Luke chapter 8. And it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, the twelve disciples. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities or other sicknesses. So it wasn't just the twelve that followed him. There were other people that followed him. Ladies followed too. You know, sometimes it might be easy to think that Jesus just came for the twelve disciples. Or, let the little children come unto me. Ladies, he came for you too. He came for men women and children of all colors, of all shapes, of all sizes. And Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. This Mary was one of the women who followed Jesus. Jesus cast out seven demons in her. Oh, can you imagine how much of a wretched 
destroyed life she had. But Jesus changed Mary's life. He transformed her by his power. And then there were other women. Verse 3, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's servant, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. In other words, they had money or uh, uh, some means of finances, and they gave to Jesus. They helped support Jesus. These women were changed and impacted by the Savior, by the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, he wanted, they wanted to give to him and help him. And they were following him too. It wasn't just the twelve. Wow. Now this is the woman we're briefly going to briefly mention on this Resurrection Sunday. When Mary Magdalene goes to the empty tomb. Remember, she had followed Jesus. She had been saved from her sin. She, there were seven demons cast out of her. God completely changed her life. But then she had to watch him die. And she had to see the twelve disciples flee. And she heard about one of them betraying Jesus. And she probably stood there with Mary at the cross, the mother of Jesus, and her heart was broken, and she saw that he was taken down and buried. Oh, how, uh, how tragic. And they, uh, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea put him in Joseph's grave, and they prepared the body. And then they wanted to take spices as he was in the grave. And that is where the story of the resurrection picks up. And where do we find it? Well, where do you find stories about Jesus in the Bible? In the Gospels. How many Gospels are there? Four. Do you know this story about Mary Magdalene? Is in all four Gospels. Um, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And look at what it says in Matthew 28, and verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher, or the grave. So Mary and Mary went to the grave on the first day of the week. Mark 16, 1 through 2. Now watch closely. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Now Matthew, how many ladies went? Two. How many ladies are here? Three. What's going on? Let's look at Luke. Luke 24 and verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. Now it sounds like there's a group. Who is it talking about? Well, let's look back at Luke 23, a few verses earlier. Verse 55. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher, and how his body was laid. That would have been referring to the women of chapter 8. And there were several mentioned there and others. So we don't know how many women were there. Look at verse chapter 24 and verse 10. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. So Matthew has two women. Mark has three women there. Luke has many women there. Look at John, chapter 20. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Who does John mention? All of the ladies? No, he just mentions Mary. Now, is anyone else scratching your head on this Easter Sunday? What is going on? Is the Bible contradicting itself? 
Is the Bible wrong? I thought the Bible had no errors. Right. The Bible doesn't have any errors. There are only suspected or supposed contradictions. When we see something that doesn't make sense, it would be easy to jump to conclusion to see, oh, there must be a mistake here. But there is an explanation. How many Gospels were there? Four. How many Gospel writers? Four. Were those four Gospel writers quadruplets? No. Were they robots? Were they droids that were exactly the same? No, they were individuals with their own personalities, with their own pairs of eyes. Now, let's imagine that we are all able to come back in the church and don't have to social distance anymore. Let's say we have a great missionary fellowship, letter writing fellowship, and we all come into the church and sit together and eat together. If we are all there, are we all partaking of the same event? Yes. But if I put Reed in one corner, Brenna in another corner, Josie in another corner, and Eli in another corner of the room, they would have their own viewpoint of the event. If they then went home and wrote about their letter writing day, would their essay be exactly the same? No. Would Brenna necessarily write down all of the people that were at Eli's table? Not necessarily. They would have different perspectives. So, these four Gospels complement each other. They don't contradict. The important thing here is that Mary was there. Mary, this woman who had been saved and transformed and seven devils cast out of her. Her heart was broken. She was going to take care of the body of her Lord. And she went to the tomb. And what did she find? It was empty. It was empty. And the women thought that someone had stolen it. And what did they do? They went and got the disciples. And Peter and John came and saw that the body was gone and they left. And they were heartbroken. But let's look at, we could look at all the accounts, but let's look at John chapter 20 and verse 11. Beginning in verse 11. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. How do you think Mary was feeling? She was hopeless when she had demons in her. But Jesus had given her hope. How do you think she felt now? She didn't have demons in her anymore. But she was probably very sad. And she looked in and she sees two angels in white sitting. The one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why do you cry? She says unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and she saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying? Whom do you seek? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, if you have taken him somewhere, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. She said, and Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. He's basically saying, you can't hang on to me, Mary. We can't spend time together here. You can't hang on to me. I'm, I'm ascending. I'm going to my Father. And um, and
and your father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Other, the other accounts show that the women were told that there were other women that saw Jesus and they were told, Jesus said, I'm going into Galilee, I will see you there, basically, is what he was saying. And they told the disciples, and the disciples didn't believe the women. They didn't believe these eyewitnesses. So just think about how Mary felt. Mary had a wretched life, was transformed by Jesus, and then he died, and she was heartbroken. But then she saw that he lived. Oh, can you imagine the hope that was in Mary's heart, the rejoicing that was in her heart. Now, Jesus did appear to the other disciples. He was with them about 40 days, and then it was time for him to go up to heaven, and he told them that he would send a comforter. Who was that comforter? The Holy Spirit. He would send the Holy Spirit, absolutely. And in Matthew 28, he is there with the disciples, and I would suspect, or there were many there, I would suspect Mary was there. Jesus had changed her life, and she didn't want him to go, but it was God's will, and he was going, but he had something to tell them first. He had a job for them. And Jesus said, came in Matthew 28, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus said, I have a job for you. Would you take this message of hope to others as you're going around the world and make disciples? And don't be afraid, just like he told Mary not to hang on to her. Mary didn't have to hang on to him here before he ascended. Because you know what he told them? I am with you. I am going but I am with you always. He had risen from the grave. He had victory over death. He had paid their sin penalty, and now he had promised to be with them forever. Oh, what hope Mary Magdalene and the disciples and all the followers of Jesus have. And if you're a follower of Jesus, if you have repented of your sin, if you have turned to Jesus in faith, if you're trusting Him alone for your salvation, then you can have that same hope. And on this special Easter Sunday, we can rejoice. Yes, He ascended into heaven, but Jesus is with us today. If you know Christ as your Savior, then He is with you. Have you accepted God's gift of salvation? If you have, then you have hope, the hope of the resurrection. So as we close tonight, this morning, we're going to close with a song. And it's a song that reminds us that Jesus lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. We're going to sing one verse and the chorus. Would you sing it out? Would you rejoice with me? in the risen Savior. Let's sing together. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Oh, man. 
us this morning. I hope you'll be able to come to our morning service outside our Easter Pray service, or you can watch it on YouTube. And remember what Jesus said, Because I live, ye shall also live. John 14, 19. Beloved, if you know Christ, then rejoice in His resurrection today. If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, please contact us. Please trust Him today. Let us show you more how you can trust Him. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank You for this wonderful resurrection morning. Thank You for the Sunday school time we can have together. Lord, would You stir our hearts to be ready to hear your word as Pastor Dan preaches this morning. Lord, for every true believer, may we rejoice in the risen Lord today, no matter what we're facing. May we remember, no matter how much agony we're going through, that you are with us always. Thank you for your saving power in our lives. And Lord, for anyone who's not yet experienced that saving grace, would you bring that part to yourself today? Bless this Easter Sunday. May your name be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we end with this. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.